and the row that's outside this. And I'm just going to... Well, now that I have this row, the inner and the outer row, is what I'm going to do. And this is not doing things right for the very, very center, but I'm going to worry about that later. Um, so... This, uh, well, actually, let's do the Y ones next. They're the easiest ones. So we're going around the ring clockwise and counterclockwise. Um, cell point X. And that, you know, because I know it's a power of two, that's just going to give me adjacency that wraps around. And likewise for negative C. Or negative Y. Now, um... Let's handle the outer one, the face going out, which is might possibly be bigger. So, um, the easy case is here, where all right, we're not changing, uh, we're not changing the number of cells in there. outer row is twice the size, actually I'm looking at this and saying, yeah, I need to apply these masks everywhere. And the reason I'm doing this is so that just we'll avoid any weird degeneracies when, you know, you're just coming in right where it wraps or something like that. But what we actually want here is cell.y times 2 and Those are the two faces that are adjacent on the positive x direction when we are going from a smaller row to a bigger row. And last of all, the inner row. Um, and the negative x direction.
And now we've given it a full list of cells that, you know, what is adjacent to what um, in the cylinder. And that's all laid out. Uh, so now that we have this way where, you know, our cylinders or our various morphs can say what cell is next to what cell, um, and this, by the way, is like very not optimal. Um, cells for row is, you know, it's coming in here, it's doing logarithms, it's doing floating point math, and that could be greatly improved, but we'll worry about that later. Um, so, where we need to go with this finally is uh, back up in here where we are doing the trace ray on a cell. And if we, uh, you know, K and in here is the case where we came in from a cell that wasn't filled to a cell that was filled, and say, what do we hit? And the last thing we want to do is um, actually put this outside all of these loops. This is why I constructed it the way I did. Um, Building morph, adjacency list, and get our adjacency. Um, so this cell is the cell that we hit, and we want to get a list of these cells that are adjacent to it. And then Adjacency list for the face that we entered this cell from. It's empty, like for some reason there are no cells in there. Uh, um, then we will report that. And then out here. this stuff if the hit didn't get cancelled. So... And finally, um, take this and say... first one from that in as a way to just check that we are working so far. And then finally, we'll go back here. up.
I just... I am going to make a special request. Mark is the most overworked person in the studio. And please don't make work for him just for the sake of making work for him. Please. Okay. So, what does this wonderful thing look like now that I've made these changes? still loading a train. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I can move the mouse along this inner wall and it tracks it really, really well. And you'll remember before it wasn't. Genesee will be available tomorrow. Um, so, anyway, now that I've fixed this problem, or not really fixed the problem, but added the code. I'm going to go back and uh, put a nice pointy roof on top of uh, Andrew Tower here. And to do that, I'm going to make a nice optimized build of this game. Because optimized, yeah. That way the building won't run annoyingly slow as I'm trying to, you know, move my mouse through it. Okay, you have to come up with a great acronym for RVES, though. I know you guys don't want me. You just want the things I make. It's okay. Moon. 